One broad way to think of Isaiah is uh, you can kind of divide it in half in terms of its tone. The first 34, 39 chapters are pretty heavy in judgment, and it's in the last chapters, those last 26, where there's a lot of comfort and a lot of hope. And some of the passages that early Christians and the Doctrine and Covenants that we today celebrate from Isaiah come from that, those latter chapters, and we're in the judgment stuff. And so sometimes it can be a little rough when you're reading certain things. But my takeaway as I was preparing for this is that even though it is heavy in judgment, I love this week's readings because it still is really full of hope. Because part of what's happening this week is the judgment that Isaiah is describing. It's judgment against systems that really are harming ancient people. You've got an Assyrian empire, you've got a Babylonian empire, you have all sorts of systems that involve uh, slavery and war. And this is the Lord coming out in judgment on behalf of his people. I love that. And, and Isaiah is a, a prophetic figure that I think we can really love and our hearts can be drawn to. It's not one of the chapters we're going to specifically look at, but there's a moment when he's prophesying of the downfall of Moab who has been one of these wicked nations. And then he pauses and it, it's chapter 15, verse five, and you get how he feels about this. My heart shall cry out for Moab, for the fugitives. And even as he's talking about the downfall of a nation, he pauses to say, and, and it reflects God's love for that nation, and I love those who are going to be hurting themselves here. And so you get this sort of, in the Pearl of Great Price, we get this weeping God who sorrows because of the pain that comes, and you get it with Enoch, and, and we see it very clearly here with Isaiah. It's beautiful. <laughs> 